As another thaw melts the tension and releases a wave of more optimism on the Korean peninsula, hopes of a peaceful future rest for now on talks between American officials and their counterparts in North Korea. A group of U.S. representatives led by Korea Ambassador Sung Kim, who has plenty of experience negotiating with Pyongyang, crossed the inter-Korean border on Sunday for dialogue that is set to continue until tomorrow. The general aim being to find some common ground before that planned summit between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and American President Donald Trump on June 12th in Singapore. That much was made clear over the weekend by the man who's looking very much like the peacemaker in all of this, South Korean President Moon Jae-in, who said after a surprise meeting with Chairman Kim on Saturday that the success or otherwise of holding the Kim-Trump summit depends on how these working-level talks go in the meantime. So, more on this ongoing dialogue. Sung Kim, previously based in Seoul, has been pulled away from his current role as Washington's envoy to the Philippines to meet North Korea's delegation, headed up by Vice Foreign Minister Che Sun hee the same official whose tough warning last week President Trump blamed for initially cancelling the June 12th Singapore summit. Ambassador Kim and Vice Minister Che have met with their respective teams at Panmunjom Truce Village within the inter-Korean demilitarized zone. It's hoped that by the end of all this, the Truce Village can instead become a symbol of lasting peace. But regardless of the dreams, the rhetoric, the pride that may be at stake, a key sticking point appears to be Washington's repeated push for the North's complete verifiable and irreversible denuclearization. You may have heard that referred to as CVID. Well, Chairman Kim reaffirmed Saturday his willingness to denuclearize. But the question remains, what will that actually look like? North Korea has made it clear it wants to steer far from the model that preceded the collapse of Libya's Gaddafi regime in 2011. But right now, the situation may be hopeful because all parties seem to want this June 12th summit to happen. Early Monday morning, Seoul time, President Trump tweeted his belief that North Korea will be a great economic nation one day. He also confirmed that US officials are in North Korea to continue preparations for the planned Singapore summit. But what seems really interesting at this point is his belief that he can entice change in North Korea by dangling an economic carrot. I truly believe North Korea has brilliant potential and will be a great economic and financial nation one day, Trump wrote, word for word. He added, Kim Jong-un agrees with me on this. It will happen. This takes us a little closer, perhaps, to seeing what Washington's delegation might be offering during these ongoing talks at Panmunjom, even though Pyongyang's public stance is that it is not interested in denuclearization simply in return for financial aid. So what might a deal actually look like? From the US side, the North needs to go a lot further than its demolition of the Pungeri nuclear test site last week, and perhaps further than Chairman Kim's reported preference for a phased and synchronized process that would likely involve a gradual give and take of dismantlement steps in exchange for sanctions relief.